Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum and good morning everyone. So, uh, we restart our lectures. Uh, so, uh, we have gone through some parts of lecture one. And uh, I think we've come to the point of Is it not going down? Okay, uh, we come to the point of introducing uh, uh, vectors and the basis vectors, and then we also introduce Einstein summation convention. Uh, and there are some rules. Uh, essentially, we mentioned about the repeated index should not be. Uh, more than twice, and also we have the idea of free index, which must be conserved on both sides of the equation. Okay. So I, this is where we stopped yesterday. Uh, essentially, this is uh, giving you the orthogonality for, and also normalization, autonomality uh, of your basis vectors. We assume that's to be the case. And uh, essentially, this gives you a two-index uh, object called the Kronecker delta. I believe we have actually seen this Kronecker delta. Let me see if this works. Okay, this is what we call the Kronecker delta. And uh, the definition is just simply when uh, i equals to j equals to 1. Here, uh, usually what happens is you're going to replace your uh, index i and index j with some numbers. So, for example, e1 dot e2, because they are orthogonal, this is equal to zero, which is actually delta. Uh, what was this? Uh, one two. Okay. So if it's e2 dot e2, then because it's being normalized, yes. Uh, length squared equals to 1. So this is delta 2, 2. Okay? So again, uh, like what I mentioned yesterday, uh, the free index here are i and j. Okay? And uh, this is also appearing on the uh, right hand side. Okay? Uh, now, as I said yesterday, the single index object, you can think of it as a vector. As a, uh, no, uh, strictly speaking, they are the components. Okay, but uh, what we can try to do with uh, these vectors is try to make some sum with your components. Okay, this delta i j, if uh, we sum together with v j over here, so the the dummy index here is essentially j. Okay. So you sum it. And then what happens is you have a free index i over here. And that should also appear on the right, uh, sorry, left hand side. Okay. So there is a, this new object we created using the Kronenica delta when you sum it together with this uh, vector that we had with the index on top. So here is index at the bottom, here is index at the top. Now, what do we call this? This is essentially what we call a dual vector to the original vector uh, vi. Okay? There's a name for this. Uh, your, the original vector is called a uh, contravariant vector. Okay? And uh, the, the single index, of index object uh, at the bottom is called the covariant method. Now, in, in, in classical mechanics, they are the same, really. Okay? If they have numerical values, uh, the right uh, the, So for Euclidean, uh, we'll talk about Euclidean geometry afterwards. In Euclidean geometry, uh, the numerical values are the same. So why bother, right? Uh, well, when you 
uh, go to a special relativity, the covariant vector and the contravariant vector is going to be different. Okay, so that's the reason why we are you know, making this slight complication of uh, defining a vector. But you also have seen the idea of dual vector. You have done quantum mechanics, right? So if you've done quantum mechanics, you probably have seen the cat vector and the brow vector. So the cat vector is essentially uh, your state. Your brow vector essentially uh, is a dual vector uh, for which when you combine the bra and cat, you get bra cat, you get a number. Okay? It's the same thing over here. It's the same, same notion. So you can think of your VI. I uh, uh, you know, I've done it over here. Uh, probably uh, the next slide. Uh, your VI with an index on top, the contravariant vector, you can think of a, as a column matrix with three components. And your covariant vector you can think of as a, a, as a row vector. So when they combine together, you get essentially a scale. Okay, so this is the, the idea. So uh, now the, the index object of the Kronecker delta, you can think of it as a matrix. You probably have learned about matrix uh, written in this way, right? The index notation. So this is what? Uh, matrix M, uh, the element uh, row I, column J, right? So, think of this to be the same as for Kronecker delta. Okay, so this uh, corresponds to some matrix, okay, where uh, the first index is essentially your uh, row index, second index is your column index. Okay, so, and if you try to write out the matrix for this chronic delta, it essentially corresponds to your identity matrix. There are two different mat matrix with an S <laughs> and matrix. Okay, uh, I have a difficulty uh, saying it. Oh. Okay, so uh, so in other words, your chronic delta is essentially the the components of your identity matrix. Okay. So what happens when you do this, if, for example, you do the contraction, <laughs> I'm trying to write on this, uh, you try, let's say you try to do this, V1, delta, 1, J, sorry, set, V1, delta, 1 here, and J, V, J. What do you get? You get delta 1, 1, V1, plus delta 1, 2, V2, plus delta 1, 3, V3. Okay? And then you substitute uh, the, the, the values of your chronological delta. So you see that delta 1, 2 here is 0. Delta 1, 3 is 0. So in other words, here you have delta 1, 1, which could, equals to 1. Then essentially what you have actually shown here is V1 with index at the bottom is the same as V1 with index at the top. So the components of a con contravariant vector and the components of the covariant vector are just identical. Okay? So you can uh, essentially have this. Okay? Uh, what's, okay, I, I said yesterday that this Kronecker delta is like a monster, it's a new object, okay? So you, now you can think of it, okay, it's just a matrix, okay? But that matrix plays a, a subtle role, okay? Uh, as you can see, for example, uh, in the case of the Converting from the contravariant vector to the covariant vector, okay, it acts as, as if like an operator, it operates on the, the index on top and brings it down. 
Okay, so you can think of it as an index lowering operator in general. Okay, so in other words, if I have another object like like this, okay, a k index on top, j at the bottom there, and then I contract it with the word contract, I, do, I want to avoid that at the moment, but okay, if you multiply this with uh, delta ik here, contraction is actually a technical term. Okay, so we introduce this later on. Uh, so you have this sum of k with this k, and the object that's going to appear by the rule of the index uh, conservation, the free index, then this has to be aig. Now again, because in, in classical mechanics, you, you deal with Euclidean geometry, uh, we'll talk about that after this, uh, there's no difference between index on top of, of up. It means the same thing. Okay, the, the numerical values, see. Now, okay, now let's introduce another uh, property of your chronic adult, okay? The property, it must be symmetric. Because by definition, what is it? By definition, let me go up. By definition, uh, over here, if i equals to j, uh, it's 1. If i is not equals to j, it's 0. But I can simply swap this. And you have the same definition. Right? Convince yourself. So, in other words, if you swap between i and j, it's just the same thing. Okay? So, that tells us, okay, this property of Kronecker uh, delta is essentially symmetric. So, that's just an intrinsic property of your Kronecker delta. But now, there's a new thing happening here. We can use the Kronecker delta as an operation that gives you the dot product. Okay, so what does it do? I'm going to make a uh, multiply this delta ij with two uh, objects here of the same from the from the same object v. And if you try to work this out, expand this. Here you have to remember you have to sum over i and you have to sum over j. And convince yourself that this is essentially uh, v1 squared plus v2 squared plus v3 squared. But what is that? That's the length of the vector, length squared of the vector. Okay, so this is a length squared. And from ordinary vector uh, algebra, you know that uh, your length squared is given by the scalar product, d dot v. Right? So in other words, you have this property of the chronic delta as if it's imposing this dot product operation. I hope this is uh, clear. So in other words, uh, your metric has this ability, well, I mentioned the word metric already, uh, this chronic delta has this ability to give you a length square. And in mathematics, there is an, uh, an object called metric that does that. So that's why now you call your chronic delta as a metric. Metric giving what? Give you the length squared. Okay? So, uh, and it so happened to be that this metric is related to another object with the same name, which can confuse you a lot. Okay, uh, you can look at look up under Wikipedia. That's uh, an object called metric. 
that talks about the length squared and length. And there's also a metric tensor. So the metric tensor has components. Okay? The metric is just some, some object that gives you length. I hope that's probably uh, a bit confusing, but uh, no, uh, it's supposed to be a two separate object. Okay? But they have relationship. So in other words, your metric tensor has a, a bit more uh, structure to it in some sense that, okay, that gives you operation between vectors in a way that it produces uh, uh, the same operation as a metric that gives you the length square, okay? So, so and this is essentially, no, I mean, this, this object that you have here is essentially your Euclidean length, Euclidean length square. Well, Euclidean length will be the square root. Right? So, we name this Kronecker delta as your Euclidean metric tensor. Okay? And sometimes we denote uh, the space with the metric tensor. And the metric tensor tells you what? It tells you how to combine two vectors uh, to give you the length. In this particular case, it has to be. To give you the length, it has to be the same vector, but you can also contract, okay, the word contract again, uh, you can also do the operation uh, uh, with different vectors, which gives you another thing. Okay? And this pair, this is sometimes called a pair in mathematical terms, this pair of R3, which is the, no, your space, with this delta thing, which is supposed to correspond to the uh, Kronecker delta, which is a, a Euclid metric tensor, that pair is called a Euclidean space. Now, it might be confusing to you, uh, I want to do that, uh, it might be confusing to you, well, R3, I know R3 is supposed to be a space, right? But if you don't have an operation, uh, a, a quantity that helps you to give you the length, it's just R3 with just coordinates. Okay? So I hope you you understand the way that mathematicians think, okay? Uh, you need some object to give you more, more properties. In this case, the, the properties are the length square, okay? So this is called a Euclidean space, and the, the way we uh, do vector algebra, and later on, even vector calculus, uh, this is what we call uh, Euclidean geometry, okay? Okay, right. Now, remember yesterday we talked about, okay, what if uh, we have two different uh, coordinate systems, two different reference frames? Okay, so now we're going to talk about that. What happens if you have two different uh, coordinate systems, then uh, your components may change, uh, components of a vector may change. Okay, so we're going to do that. So, uh, here, again, uh, I'm going to introduce something a, a little bit more. Uh, uh, the notation can be uh, a bit confusing, but I'm going to introduce uh, the idea of having different components, okay, by uh, the dash notation. So the dash notation, uh, as if it, uh, it Okay, you have the undash uh, system, undash coordinate system, with the dash coordinate system. Okay, so the dash coordinate system will have components with uh, the letters, the subscripts. Okay, with the dash that correspond to the dash coordinate system. So in this case, uh, for example, one can have this. Okay, one can have this where. Uh, you convert, uh, you convert one basis in the undash coordinate system to the dash coordinates, the basis. Okay, so you have your i, j, k, for example. Uh, translate it a little bit, for example, or rotate it in one. Okay, 
actually translate will give you other problems about nama. Okay, uh, rotate it, for example, then you have, uh, let's say you have IJK in the beginning and then you have rotation that, that way. Okay, this one will not appear on the screen. Uh, okay, the one in the class will know. Okay, uh, so you have that possibility. So in other words, this AIJ dash, okay, and uh, is like a transformation. Uh, this thing is like a transformation matrix. Now you might again be confused about another thing. Uh, previously, I uh, have your MIJ, right? With both index at the bottom. Now you have index, one index at the top. Doesn't matter. Okay? You just uh, have the convention saying that the first index corresponds to the row. Second index corresponds to the column. Okay. Right? So in this case, your AIJ dash, your I is the row index, your J dash is the column index. Okay? So what happens is now, remember the idea of a vector as a geometry object, it doesn't really need those coordinate systems, right? You have a vector in space that way. Okay. I have to explain to my other student in class. If you have a vector in this way, it doesn't matter how you have your coordinate system, but if you change your coordinate system, your components of this vector will change. Right? And how are we going to write this mathematically? Well, we just say the following. We have V written in terms of component times basis vector. Okay? So this is in the undash uh, coordinate system. And V uh, written in the dash coordinate system. So you have a different basis over here and you have a different component. But they correspond to that vector in space that way. So they are the same thing. Even though I'm writing in the dash coordinate system and undash coordinate system, but together, this whole thing, they are the same vector in space. So I hope you get that uh, picture in mind. So the components may change because you change coordinate system, but the vector itself doesn't change. Okay? So now, if I do that, I know that I can trans what you call convert this basis vector. Sorry, uh, get this basis vector from the old basis vector, right? Using this. So I plug this in, and I will get the following, right? This is just taking this equation, and then I see this and this. Okay, so you can see now, okay, I have EI over here, I have EI over here on both sides of the equation. This is the left hand side, this is the right hand side. Okay, so I can now, okay, since these are the same, okay, I can remove EI and that tells us that this has to be the same as that. Because they are referring to the same uh, basis vector, EI. So in other words, we have now what we call a transformation rule for your components of a vector. What does it do? You multiply this AIJ dash with VJ dash and you get back your old components. So this is uh, what we call the transformation law for contravariant vector. If you have done mathematical physics, I think you probably have seen this before, right? Okay. And uh, of course, this is using this basis vector transformation, but you can also have the inverse transformation. Now to, to, to make this different transformation, because the inverse is actually a different operation, 
So I'm going to write it as A tilde. Just there. Okay? And then you do the same thing. Okay? I rewrite uh, in terms of uh, both dash and undash coordinate system here. But now I have the ability to convert this uh, uh, using that. Okay? So I have now this. And essentially, what do I have now? We have the inverse operation of this uh, thing. Here, what's happening over here? You convert the, the dash coordinate, dash components of your V to the undash components. Here, you convert your undash components of V to the dash components. It may be confusing, okay? But believe me, after a while you get the hang of it because why? The index notation is very simple. Remember conservation of index. If there's a free index on top, it should appear also on the, on the other side. So in this case, if I want to write VK dash, I know that I have to write something like this. A the k dash i v i. So here's your free index. Okay? And the same thing over here. Here are the free index. Any questions at the moment? Okay? So uh, one of the ways to think about this uh, equation, for example, is to think in terms of the column vectors. This. Okay. Uh, you can think of this, your V over here with the index on top, the contravariant vector, okay, as the column vector. Okay. And then uh, the other side is also a contravariant vector in different coordinate systems, the dash coordinate system. So you have another column but over here. So this is 3 plus and 3 plus 1. 3 times 1. This is 3 times 1. If you want to uh, make this consistent, that this A has to be 3 times 3. Simple, right? Okay. And the same for the other one. Okay. So uh, the one now is that you have this inverse one, A tilde. And uh, your A here is the, 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 the first one that we mentioned just now. Yeah. So this is the, the thing that I've, I've uh, said earlier. The first index is the row index, second index, column, column index, irrespective of whether it's superscript or subscript. Uh, you understand that? Right? Superscript is the one on top, subscript is the in, uh, index at the bottom. And then, uh, This is, going, this is going to be sound a little bit confusing. Uh, the superscript index is called a contravariant index. Okay? Just like your contravariant vector, right? Index on top. And uh, uh, subscript, okay? The subscript is what we call a covariant index, which is just like your covariant vector. So uh, the confusing part is what? The confusing part is that your matrix over here, matrix A, has both covariant and uh, covariant and contravariant index. So it's like a mixing of two different things. Okay? So that's the slight confusion. But, okay, what one can do now is the following. You know how to convert from, uh, say, uh, for example, this one, okay, convert from the undash coordinate system goes to the dash coordinate system, right? So this is that. Uh, undash components 
to dash. And this one is going from the dash to undash. Now if you combine them both, okay, uh, let me see what I did here. Uh, okay, let, let's combine, let's do, uh, let's do this first. Okay, I convert the dash to undash. And then follow with the, this one next, convert from undash to dash. So what do I get? I get back dash to dash. But dash to dash is the same space, the same coordinates. Okay? So what happens in this particular case, if I try to do both uh, transformation uh, consecutively, what I'm going to get is the following. Okay? So this is the, the, the double transformation here. Okay, and I'm writing vj dash. Uh, sorry, I'm writing vk dash in terms of vj dash, the same coordinate system. Now, how they can be uh, 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 so sort of equated uh, between each other is if the, they are corresponding to the same component. Okay, and to give you the same component, you uh, essentially write this as like a Kronecker delta. So if it's not the same, it's zero. If it's the same, then you get one, right? So that's the definition of the Kronecker delta. But now the Kronecker delta doesn't have index at the bottom, both of them at the bottom. But now you have one index at the top, one index at the bottom. So this is like a Kronecker delta in a mixed kind of space. Okay, so in other words, what do we have? We have this thing equals to that. So what does that say? A tilde times A, okay, think of this as a matrix now. A tilde times A equals to this Kronecker data. What is Kronecker data? It's the identity matrix. Now, where have you seen this before? Hmm? Uh, yeah, okay, not, not that one. Some matrix times some another matrix give you identity. Inverse matrix, that's right. Uh, Rotation matrix, what does it look like? It's R transpose R. And in fact, if you look at the index of your, your okay, let's look at A tilde K dash I, your, your dash is appearing in front and your undash appearing at the back. If I try to swap them, what do I need? I need a transpose. Okay. So in other words, this rotation, this sorry, this transformation matrix is really a rotation. So your A tilde correspond to a transpose. Okay. 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 Uh, So A tilde here is your A inverse, which is your A transpose. That's what I'm trying to say. Right. Uh, okay. Let me see what do I have next. I can't remember what. Now, okay. That that was done for the case of the contravariant. For the case of the covariant matter, you can do the same thing. Okay. Uh, the covariant vector, uh, let me go down first. Okay. We can do. Uh, uh, 
This is not it. Um, let me just go down a little bit. Uh, where did I do that? Let me just check in front. Okay, it's probably at the back. Okay, never mind. So uh, let, let me introduce this first before you do that. Okay? I thought we were going straight to the covariate. So here is again some uh, Probably I should rearrange this, but never mind. Uh, okay. Uh, covariant. Remember covariant vector has components at the bottom. Now, if your vector is the same kind of a geometric thing, shows a, a direction in space. Okay? So, in other words, if, uh, if I take uh, that kind of ideal, uh, ideal covariant vector with a direction in space, uh, I can write this in terms of the basis vectors. Okay? But now the basis vectors have to be a different basis than the one for the basis vectors that you had before. Okay? Vertical bottom about some water. One water, vertical water. What was bitter? So vertical bottom about another better water than water, vertical bottom Okay? I'm not sure whether you have you, you learned those kind of tongue twisters. Okay? So, uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, uh, what was that? Okay. Uh, if you remember previously, this V, which is, this is contravariant, contravariant thing. Uh, sorry for the horrible handwriting. Uh, so the contravariant thing has components I at the top. And then your basis vector will be I at the bottom. So it's being sum. Okay, but now, what about if you want to represent the covariant vector? So I have to uh, uh, construct a new kind of basis called the dual basis. Okay, because uh, I have my index at the bottom already. So if I want to make it geometric, meaning you know, it doesn't have any free index, okay? I have to con uh, to 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 uh, put them together. One with index on, uh, at the bottom and one index at the top. So this is essentially what we call the dual basis. It's a bit confusing, but no, uh, I, and it doesn't matter. This is a, the set thing with classical mechanics. You don't care. Classical mechanics. There's no difference between contravariant vector and covariant. Vector. But when you go to uh, things like special relativity, even special relativity, not talking about general relativity, do you know uh, the difference between the two? Special relativity, there's no gravity. There's no curved space-time, just flat. Okay? General relativity, you have curved space-time. And that's why uh, it's, it gets more uh, complicated. Okay, so special relativity is just flat, but even the flat space time, because you have the time component there, you already have the difference between the contravariant and covariant. Okay? But in classical mechanics, where you ignore time, it doesn't make any difference. Okay, so back to this. So here you have the same thing like, like we had before. Previously we had E, I, dot e j equals to delta i j we have the same thing over here okay e i of the dual basis dot e j will give you another object a two index object with the, the the index on top this is sometimes called the dual metric okay so this is sometimes called a dual metric or over here, I call it inverse Euclidean matrix. Now, my okay. So, so it's the same thing. 
If you write it as a matrix, uh, as a three by three matrix, it gives you just your identity matrix. Okay? But one identity matrix is for the covariant case, one identity matrix is for the contravariant case. The components are the same. Okay? Okay. So you have this, oh, got two different matrix. <laughs> Looks the same. Uh, 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 Ah, something like that, I can't remember. <laughs> but they are do two different plando. <laughs> okay, so 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 you have that. But now you can make even much more uh, uh you can have two index objects which has two index at the bottom, two index at the top. You can make a mix. Okay? So I can have something like this. And this is not really a matrix. This is a matrix. This is a matrix tensor, but this is not quite a matrix tensor. Because a matrix tensor is defined to take two objects of the same type. For example, contravariant vector with contravariant vector, covariant vector with covariant vector. But this one, if you, if you if you try to combine them, you need a one contravariant vector, one covariant vector. It can give you the same kind of operation. Okay? So usually we talk about metric tensor for a particular space, then you have to have the both of the same time. Okay? This is probably uh, better talk of a, as a contraction tensor. Uh, we'll talk about that. So we have this ability to have, to define two index object with different types of indices, okay? Uh, and from uh, your your from this, for example, okay, from this, you can infer that your dual metric, okay is the inverse of your metric. In fact, this is the same uh, case uh, in even general relativity, for example. You have a metric tensor, which is a much more complicated thing. You have also the dual one, which is actually the inverse of that. Okay? It's the same. It, it, uh, that property uh, you know, carries on until the general relativity. I'm saying this because there's a project student doing cosmology. <laughs> okay, uh, so here are some exercises for you to, to check whether you understand what's going on. Okay, so remember when you have double index, okay, when you have double index, you have to sell. Bad thing what I'm supposed to say. Okay, uh, the first one is easy. The first one is easy, but the the, the last four uh, you have to think in terms of case by case. The best thing to do is okay, consider the case i equals something, j equals something, and then you check for all possible combinations. Okay. Uh, to do two, 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 three, four, and five. Okay? So you need how many? Uh, three for i, three for j. That means you do you check all the nine different equations, okay, and show that that is true. Then you you prove the, the thing. So in other words, this is a compact notation for nine different equations. Okay, but it's now easy because 
you say, okay, this is a contraction, and I know what, what delta does. Delta, if you remember, uh, V, I, uh, delta, I, J, V, J, what do I do? I replace whatever this sum index, this dummy index, with the other index. That's the, the effective uh, action of this uh, pro delta. So here, I have this dummy index J, J here. I have to replace this with the index I at the bottom. So it's like a replacement. So in this particular case, I can see that, okay, this is a sum over dummy index K. I will have to replace uh, that, for example. Okay, I'm thinking about, let's, let's suppose I take this one. I refer to this object. I'm going to replace this index K here with that index J. Okay? And, and, and the rest is the same. Okay? So try to just get used to this. Once you get used to this, uh, no, the calculations get easier. Initially, you say, ah, <laughs> Right. And now we go to the transformation of this. Now we have, uh, why is it the same thing? Uh, oh, it, oh, this is good. This is good. I uh, can't remember what I'm writing. So here uh, is a transformation matrix for the metric tensor. Okay? So what do I do? Uh, remember that the, the, this is again the, the, the original matrix, okay? EI dash, EJ dash in the dash coordinate system. That gives you delta I dash, J dash, right? So I know how to transform this back to the undashed coordinate system. I know how to transform this back to the undashed coordinate system, right? So I can plug those in, and what do I have? I have now your matrix, your Euclidean matrix, in the dash coordinate system uh, related to the Euclidean matrix in the undash coordinate system. Okay? And later on, we understand this kind of transformation where you, you transform each of these index by this matrix A as the tensorial transformation. We, uh, we learn better because over here, because everything seems to look the same, though they are different. Okay? So it's quite confusing. When you go to the case of special relativity, then this thing gets a little bit different, okay? So that's the... Um, okay, now, man. <laughs> uh, are there questions at this, at this stage? I mean, do you feel confused? Okay, yeah? So I can move on. Okay. So uh, the... So this is again, uh, here uh, what happens is I can think of this, uh, the transformation law for the Euclidean metric as another way of understanding this uh, transformation matrix being an orthogonal matrix. Okay. So, okay. You have that. So you conclude Actually, we have concluded earlier, okay? But here's an, an, another better proof to, to preserve the metric. The metric gives you the length squared. That's more geometric, okay? The metric gives you the length squared, and going from one uh, metric to another metric, dash to undash, for example, there is this property here uh, which is preserved, okay? And uh, the one that can preserve that property is the orthogonal matrix. 
and the transformation. Okay. You remember what's the definition of uh, orthogonal matrix? Okay. You you rotate it. Your vector has the same length. Okay. I'm not sure that you have to learn about orthogonal matrix. I believe you have. Right. Okay. So that should not be. A so A is an orthogonal matrix. But then, if you take this equation, okay, remember, uh, if you take the determinant, this is determinant i, determinant i is just 1, okay, this is the determinant of A transpose A, determinant of A transpose is the same as determinant A, so this gives you determinant A squared, okay. So, in other words, determinant A, is plus or minus one. Okay, so the case of the rotation is the case of the plus one. We have a, this is supposed to be a revision, really. Okay, but there is another possibility which you should try to consider as well, which is the negative one. The negative one, your A will be a reflection method. So, uh, what's the difference between the two? Rotation. So, I, I have to show you. <laughs> Rotation, uh, if you rotate it, your orientation is the same. Okay, uh, do, you, do you understand orientation? Okay. Orientation, that means, uh, if I do this with the left hand, left hand side, we have with the left-hand coordinate system, x, y, z, x, y, and z, that way. If I do it, this one, this is different. This is a right-hand coordinate system. You no, know, suddenly, you know, your, your y gets flipped. Okay? But usually, we, 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 when we draw things, we, write, uh, we draw it in terms of the left-hand coordinate. So if you rotate it, the orientation of the, each of these things, okay, is always the same with respect to each other. But if you reflect, okay, reflect number, <laughs> uh, then the orientation becomes like your right hand coordinate system. Okay? So this is called orientation reversing. So when, when it involves a reflection, it reverses the, the left-hand uh, coordinate system to a right-hand coordinate system. Um, we have until 11, right? Tengok semua dah rasa. Oops. Sorry about that. Come on. Okay, so this is where I wanted to go just now. Uh, there is transformation law for the contravariant vector. We have learned about that. Okay, contravariant vector, remember, index at the top. Now, you can do the same with respect to the uh, covariant vector. Covariant vector, sometimes for short, we call, we call it as covector. Okay? Okay. Right, good. So, uh, just like uh, it's all confusing, right? So, uh, here, what happens is, is I'm doing this kind of Thing. Uh, remember the, the index at the bottom is the covariant vector, the covector. Think of it as a row matrix and then your contravariant as a uh, column matrix. So uh, if you do this, you again get the idea of a V squared. Okay? 
So this co-vector with vector. So uh, short, 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 <laughs> short, uh, what do you call it? Short way of saying contra variant because you know, it gets too bulky, too wordy when we talk about it. So I'm going to say contra variant vector, I can just say it as a vector. For co variant vector, I just say it as co vector. So you combine co vector with uh, vector, okay, you get the length vector. But if you think in terms of the dot product, V dot V, this is the same object. Uh, vector, dot with vector, and get, that gives you V squared. So it's two different equations here, really. Okay? But it gives you the same answer. So this could also be, uh, so this is the same object. So get, getting the length squared, you can have different ways of doing it. Okay? So you either use a dot product or sometimes in quantum mechanics we call it inner product. You take two cats, okay? two cat vectors, I don't know if you still remember or not. Two cat vectors, you want to find the inner product between two cat vectors. What do you do? You convert one of the cat vectors to the brow vector. And that is precisely that. Okay? But the operation of inner product should be thought of as operation between two objects of the same type. But in the process, you could convert one of the objects to the dual vector. So it gives you the equivalent operation. Okay? So, uh, confusing, but hope you get the idea. So here, uh, one could actually check all these things. I'm going to cut short because it's quite boring now. <laughs> for, for me, okay? I'm not sure to you. So all of these things can be actually shown. Particularly the one that should be known here is this transformation law. Now, Check back for the contravariant case. To go from the uh, undash to the dash, it would require your A tilde. Right? Here, it requires your E. So it has a different, the co-vector and the vector, contravariant vector, has two different transformation bonds. One of it uh, using A, one of it using uh, A in words. Okay? So this I've mentioned just now. Okay. So uh, the con uh, for the case of the co-vector transformation is like that. Okay? So here you have your 3 by 3 matrix, the transformation matrix. Here you have 1 by 3. Combine them, you get one by two. Now, uh, previously, the contravariant case, you have a three by one, three by three times three by one. You get three by one, okay? So this is a bit different, and the, the, uh, the, the multiplication is also different, because here, your three by two matrix is multiplied on the uh, right. The previous one, is multiplied on the left. Okay, so you can see the uh, the, the the different nature of the transformation of, of the, the the two types of vectors. Okay, can we finish this off uh, so that no uh, at least uh, we can stop at this after this. I suppose and everyone looks tired. I'm tired. <laughs> okay, uh, one of the things that we also learned in, in vector algebra is you have another type of problem. Okay? You have the cross product 
or sometimes what we call the uh, vector product, because uh, the the resultant uh, output when you combine the two vectors is not scalar, but it's a vector itself. Okay, scalar product it gives you a scalar vector product it gives you a vector. Okay, so uh, and by definition, by definition you know this. I cross J gives you K. Uh, J cross K equals to I, and then K cross I gives you J. So uh, read, written in this way. Okay? So you can think of E1 is I, E2 is J, E3 is K. Okay? So I need to be able to incorporate this idea of cross product. Well, uh, generally we are given this kind of uh, definition of cross product. I'm going to give you another type of uh, definition of cross product. I'm not sure whether you have learned this. If you are in my class of mass method, I have actually teach this kind of stuff. Okay. In the case of cross product, we have to introduce a new object. Let's see what's that object. Have you seen this before? Anyone have seen this before? Maybe I taught you. Bella? <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, uh, I love doing this actually. Uh, when I, when I do a class online, I have to I have to get very formal. Uh, okay, uh, I hope you understand when you see this video later on. <laughs> uh, so you have this uh, new object which now has three indices, three indices i, j, and k. But uh, the definition is almost the same like your chronic adalbert. The only difference is that you have an extra value. Okay? In the case of a chronic adapter, it's only 1 and 0. Here, I'm going to no, throw in minus 1. The epsilon here is like that. that uh, you are able to differentiate between the orientations. Okay? So this epsilon IJK is uh, 1 when it's even permutation of 1 to 3. So if it's uh, odd permutation, then it's minus 1. So that, that definition is actually always. So you can see this. Okay, This is the natural ordering, 1, 2, 3, right? Make a cyclic permutation of this, 1, 2, 3. Put 2 in front, 3 in front, and then you get 2, 3, 1, and then 3, 1, 2. That is class one. This is odd. No, this is sorry. This is even permission. Take epsilon three, one two. Oh, is it appearing there? Three one two to show that uh, permutation is even here. What do I need to 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 get back to the natural ordering? I have to change one and three. For example, I get one three two, and then I interchange three and two here. I get one, two, three. So how many changes do I make? Two changes. Okay, so two is even. Okay? And you flip a reflection, really. Okay, this is like a reflection of one, two, three. This is the unnatural order. Okay? The reverse order. Okay. The reverse order, this is three, two, one, and do again the cyclic commutation, and you get to be the uh, value of minus one. Now, what else can you get? Well, you can get objects like this with two indices to be the same, or all indices to be the same. Then that one will have to be equal to zero. Okay? So, in other words, uh, if you look at this, uh, 
take this one and this one for example. Here I'm exchanging the, the, the two indices of two and three here. So every time you change one pair, you get a minus sign. Okay. If I change uh, say two three one here this and this uh, this and uh, that for example so I exchange the first two index I get three to one and again myself so if I can write that property okay in general so I write epsilon ijk exchange any pair you get a minus sign So now I don't have to write specifically what, what i, j, and k is, right? Because I can think of it as any number one to three. Uh, there's a similar thing for the case of the dual case. So you can create another uh, object with index at the top. Okay? For us, it's uh, enough for us to consider as the, the, the case of the, the contravariant case. So, con contravariant case, the cross product is given by epsilon ijk, uh, the vector v here, the component vector v here, the component vector w here, v cross w here, okay, and then the unit vector. Or sometimes you can write it this way so that you can remember better. I, I here, J, J there, K, K. Okay? If you don't believe me, try writing it out. So instead of writing the determinant, you write a single line. Okay? And we use that to do, uh, okay, uh, one of the things I probably have, uh, since I have not taught you match method, one of the things I mentioned, you use all this abstract notation of the epsilon, for example, when you want to uh, prove a general identity. If you have, uh, you given V with some numerical, numer numerical values, W with some numerical values, then it's easier to use your determinant because you have numbers in but once you don't have numbers, you leave it arbitrary, okay, then uh, the technique that you want to use is essentially using this index notation, okay. So here, if you look, what is the uh, assail, the product of this cross product? It's really a, a, a vector of a different type. Why? If you look at this, okay, uh, forget about this at the moment. Here we have index on top, index on top, contract, uh, multiply, okay, with this index at the bottom, right? And then this one, okay, this is really what? This is really the dual basis. It's not the, the, the basis for the contravariant vector. It's the basis for the covariant vector. So in other words, your, your, your cross product gives you a, a vector of a different type, really. Okay? Uh, in some cases, it's called a pseudo vector. I do not want to use that at the moment. Okay? But it's, no, it's like a different vector. So V cross W is actually a covariant vector. Now, to help you, you know, I promise I'll finish it. Okay. To help you uh, uh, get general identities, 
what we need to do is to be able to multiply two uh, epsilons together. One epsilon with the index at the bottom, one epsilon with the index at the top. Okay, just like your chronic deltas, how you count, how you multiply two deltas. Okay, so it's the same here. And what's the 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 result? Okay, this one is very hard to prove. So I do not need to prove. Okay, but you can accept this as an identity. You can prove it. You can prove it, but you have to prove case by case. Like that, you know, you have uh, uh, what one line is actually representing nine equations. Here, let me tell you, okay, how many equations we're supposed to have? How do you count the number of equations? Look at the free index: one, two, three, one, two, three, six index. Okay. So I have three to the power of six. Uh, is that right? Yeah. Three here, three here, three here, three here, three here, three. So three power of what? Six, huh? Three power six, what? Three power of six. Three How much? Okay. <laughs> huh? Seven to nine. So you have seven hundred thirty-nine equations in this one single equation. Two okay, seven to nine. Okay, now <laughs> right? And. One of the things that we want to use, okay, the, the, the most important that we want to use is the following, this type of equation. So this you accept in general, but the thing that we want to actually use is where you have one index here to be the same as the one index over here. And, uh, I let you work out this thing, so you just simply uh, uh, take p over here to be equals to k, and then write out k, okay? and then you find out what the determinant, and then it will go to simplify to be this thing. The product of two deltas. And you can see the anti-symmetric property because there's a minus sign. Uh, I think this, uh, this is okay here. Yeah. So G and I, this is I and G. Okay. So now I can use this identity to help you prove the the usual back cat rule without using determinants. Okay. So I can uh, try to do this over here, for example, if I write it, the k component of that, so I'll have uh, epsilon i, j, k, u, i, v, cross w, j, for example, k, uh, and then uh, this one will give you another epsilon here with the epsilon on top there, okay, this is that, with uh, component j there, so that's J, Q, R, V, Q, W, R. So what do I have over here? I will have this property. And I swap J and K over here. And I get that minus sign there. So I can now use this, replace it by the equivalent of this, and I get the two deltas. And when you contract this, for example, over here, uh, I have Q and R here and Q and R over here. I get UI. Remember that you just simply replace the index. K uh, will replace the index Q. So 
I'll get VK here. And then uh, I will replace the index R, and I get WI here. Okay? And the same thing for this one, you get this. So this gives you U dot, uh, so here you can see that this is the same index, so that's a dot product. Okay, remember, co-vector or vector is like a dot product. And then this one, again, one index at the top, one index at the bottom, so uh, dot product, so I get that. Multiply by what? The k component of V, the k component of W. So remove the k component, then you get essentially this. And there are plenty of vector identities that you can actually prove in general without having numerical values. Okay? In general, using this, this type of uh, index notation. So I think no, uh, for this, I need you to go through. Okay? I need you to go through so that you, you are sort of comfortable uh, doing this manipulations with indices. I will give you some exercises later on uh, uh, for the assignment. So I think I will stop there for today. This only lecture one. Huh? Uh, the notes okay, is not corresponding to a one hour lecture. Actually, no, one lecture of the notes can, for example, here, I'm spending almost what, two hours for this lecture, including the one yesterday. Okay. So I, I, I'll stop there here for today. Thank you. And I hope uh, uh, you have uh, fill up your attendance list. Okay. So thank you, everyone. I will stop the recording now. So let me go back to here. So thank you for attending. Okay. <laughs> So I, I stop now, okay?